this has obviously been a pretty difficult quarter. What, what happened? Well, first of all, Becky, I appreciate being here um, during a difficult report. Right. But it's a chance to talk about kind of our business and where things stand. And I frame it by really looking at kind of the front of the house of our business and then the back of the house. And if I think about the front of the house, the consumer gets facing component, you know, we saw really strong comps, over 3 percent on top of 23 percent last year. And importantly, it was driven by traffic. Traffic up 4 percent on top of 17 percent last year. Guests are shopping our stores. They're enjoying our services. They're using drive up. But clearly, the challenge for us in this quarter was the back of house. From a freight and transportation standpoint, things have changed significantly from even 13 weeks ago. We did not project, I did not project the kind of significant increases we would see in freight and transportation costs. And you've been talking about it on CNBC almost every day. I think yet again this morning, you talked about all time record fuel and diesel costs. Right now, we project that's going to hit us about a billion dollars of incremental costs in this fiscal year. So a significant increase that we didn't anticipate. The other change is in our category mix. While our comps grew by 3.3 percent, pretty balanced between digital and stores, we added another billion dollars in incremental growth in the quarter. The mix of the categories looked very different than we expected. We saw great strength in food and beverage and household essentials. Our beauty business grew by double digits. But we started to see some softening in some of the discretionary categories, including those big bulky categories, TVs, kitchen appliances, bikes. As the consumer started to shop differently, and I'll, I'll come back and talk about what we're seeing from a trend standpoint. That certainly impacted our mix and our margin mix, but it's also added complexity in our supply chain. Mm -hmm. Those big bulky items are now in our supply chain, not moving at the rate we expected. We had inventory that we would have liked to have had last year that arrived late. And we pulled certain inventories up early to make sure we're ready for the back to school and back to college season. So that's added additional complexity and cost in our supply chain. And we did not anticipate that kind of change as we were sitting here 13 weeks ago. So, so we own it. But freight transportation, a change in mix, and then the increased complexity in supply chain have added, obviously, pressure to our operating income. If, if those things were not anticipated 13 weeks ago, what are, what are you seeing now um, for the month of May? Is the consumer yeah. rolling over at all? Are any of these situations improving? How do you get your arms around it? Yeah. Becky, thinking about the consumer right now, one, we've seen May off to a very strong start. Um, American families celebrated Mother's Day. Uh, we saw record sales and fresh flowers and plants and things like champagne and gifting. Mom was recognized. And I really want to go back to some of those trend changes we've seen. It's a shopping change in how they're spending their dollars, but we're still seeing strong traffic and we're still seeing growth. A year ago, during the pandemic, we were buying lots of TVs for our homes, as many Americans for really the last two years have been working and educating their families from home. Right. Well, they're shifting from buying TVs to right. buying luggage. Right. And our luggage business was up over 50%. They're they, traveling again. They were, so, they were buying TVs when there was something to watch on Netflix, yeah, Brian. Unfortunately, yeah. Netflix has its own problem because there's nothing. No, that's, yeah. a, that's not your fault. Could you have, and I'm wondering when you're thinking about profitability versus maintaining market share, could you have raised prices? What would have happened if you raised prices to soften the, the margin hit that you were taking because of all the, uh, the increased expenses? Would you have... Did you feel at the time if you raised prices uh, that you would have lost customers? They would have, they would have resisted. There is, I mean, it must be very difficult yeah. to, to, to set prices. Yeah. And, and then the other thing is, do you, when you hear all the rhetoric out of Washington, gouger, 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 was that in the back of your mind that, that when, when they blame all the inflation on greedy U.S. corporations, is that in the back of your mind? I can't raise prices to, to, to maintain my own margins because of this? Joe, it's been in the back of my mind is one, taking care of those guests and those families that depend on us for value and affordability each and every day. And certainly during a time of inflation, that's more important than ever. And taking care of our teams. So, you know, we've been really focused on making sure we surgically and selectively pass on some costs where we can. But we've got to make sure right now we provide value for that consumer who is, again, still shopping in our stores and still using our site. 
So it's a balance. So you won't do it this quarter either. You won't get uh, you won't get prices more in line with your costs yeah. this quarter either. Just as we're still going to have some of the same challenges in the second quarter. We certainly expect those to moderate over the balance of the year as we rebalance our inventories and look at opportunities to improve efficiency. But we're going to continue to stay focused on protecting the consumer and those guests who shop our stores, provide them great value because they are still shopping our stores. Yeah. And we're seeing great resilience with the consumer. You know, I talked about TVs being exchanged for luggage. You know, those small appliances that were you know, in everyone's shopping basket over the last couple of years, you know, those are being replaced by consumers who are shopping for more toys. Because Becky, right now, they're going to birthday parties for the first time in a couple of years. Yeah. So they're still spending. It's a consumer who comes to Target to shop all of our categories. Yeah. But we're seeing a shift in what they shop and how they're shopping right now.